Hello YouTube, thought I'd do a quick video here on how to set up your repeater identification using the interface board that I designed and built that is for the Redivis RT97S or the Midland MXR10 GMRS 2A radio repeater. This interface board lets you uh, hook up a computer to those repeaters because they have a data port inside of them. And you can run software to do your repeater ID over your airwaves and or over Zello, depending on how you set it up, or your date and time and all that stuff. So that's what the interface board is for. This video is going to be about how do I set up my repeater ID separately, okay? Um, now, before we get into that, I could, and, and I'm going to explain why I don't, but I could incorporate my repeater ID along with the date and time and weather program. There is a spot where you can check box uh, to have a play a, a, an audio file after it's done, either before or after it's done doing the date and time and weather. The only problem with that is that, it's, well, I shouldn't say problem, but the only downside of that is if you want to have your repeater ID itself every 15 minutes and you use this program, it's going to say the date and weather along with it every 15 minutes. It's not terrible, but it might be a little much for some people. So if you want to have it to be separately, then we use a separate program to do this. Now, you have to, to be able to run all three programs, you got to do the COM port sharing program. I did a video on that. I'm not going to get into that in this video. I'll post that link in the description below. So what I, what I do is I have, obviously, my date and time and weather, as you can see here. And then I run a third program that I use for the repeater identification. And how to set this up, it's real simple. What we do is we're going to go to port, we're going to go to COM port, and then we're going to select uh, the COM port number that the COM port sharing software gave you. In my case, it's COM port 1. Yours could be different, but we need to, that COM port number that you got from the COM port sharing software. Okay? So you select that, uh, and then now we got to go to port we got to go to ptt configuration now for this to work on the interface board we need to check box ptt equals dtr plus rts we're going to hit okay on that okay the next thing we're going to do configuration sound card now you could you know try to leave it at let windows choose the sound card i prefer to have it pick the sound card just to avoid any potential problems so I check I choose my sound card now this is the USB sound card that your interface board is hooked up to in my case it's going to be microphone number five and playback is going to be speaker number five as you can see I have more than one USB sound card uh, plugged in well one more than one USB audio device plugged in I should say so but the one that is using my uh, that my interface board is hooked up to is going to be uh, the speaker five and the microphone five. So we select that, we hit OK. Now we got to go and set up the beacon, which we're going to go to configuration. We're going to go to B text beacon. We're going to select that. Make sure you check box check to activate the beacon here you can select you want it to be you know in my case i got it for every 15 minutes you can do seconds you can do whatever um if i recall i believe the fcc says every 15 minutes however if you read the fcc and if i'm understanding it correctly a gmrs repeater does not really need to identify itself. It's the users who are using the repeater shall be identifying themselves. But if you'd rather play it safe, you can do it this way to have the repeater identify itself. Um, so we check 
this box, we do 15 minutes, and then down here is where we select our audio file. Now, I mentioned this a little bit ago. I'll post a link to that video that I did a while back ago, how you can convert your call sign into a Morse code. Or, if you want to use your own voice and you know pre-record your own voice and save it as an audio file you could do that or for that matter there's a lot of programs out there that can convert text that you type and converts that to a, a audio or to sound and they can save it as an audio file many different ways to do this in my example here I converted my call sign to Morse code so every 15 minutes because I haven't said every 15 minutes, I hear beep, 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 uh, over the airwaves and over Zello. Uh, it's identifying the repeater using my call sign uh, as in Morse code. And so that's, uh, like I said, there's many different ways to do that, but that's how I do it. Um, I could make it be a pre-recorded voice. I could use my voice, pre-recorded, you know, save my voice, whatever. But that's how I do it. Um, once that's done, that is all you have to do. This is it. Now, this will play, depending on how you have your interface board set up, this will play over your airwaves, your two-way radio airwaves, and over Zello. In my case, I have it also playing over my, my repeater Zello test channel. Uh, I'll post that link on how to get to my repeater uh, test channel in the description below. So that's pretty much all you got to do. It's pretty simple. Um, I, like I said, I, I'll post a link on how to, how to convert. I believe, if I remember correctly, the video I did, oh, it's been a while, maybe about a year ago already. I believe in that video I did show how to do it with how to convert your call sign into a Morse code. And I believe I also did how to convert text. If you type text on the, on a, on the computer there, how you can convert that to a person's voice, I believe, if I remember right. Uh, but anyway, I'll post a link on how to how to do uh, the Morse code in the description, how to convert that. Um, so there you have it. Real simple to have your GMRS two-way radio repeater identify itself uh, when you need to. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. Please subscribe. Thank you, and have a good day.